In this video, we'll consider how to prepare a problems and opportunities statement. One of the intentional purposes of risk analysis is to make sure that risk managers find the right problem before they begin any assessment or decision making. There are basically two ways that you find the right problem. One would be reactive or passive problem finding. This is when a problem is triggered by some outside influence, perhaps a stakeholder, an event, something usually beyond your control, that causes the problem to come to you. So the classic example of reactive or passive problem finding is when a problem knocks down your door on a Friday afternoon when you're getting ready to go home for the weekend. A second way to find a problem is proactively or to purposely seek out and find problems. This is when risk managers are looking actively for the most important problems to solve. Or they could be looking further onto the horizon for problems that are out there that they can proactively address now. As we move through this particular little mini lecture, I'm going to be talking primarily about problems because that's what's the greatest concern to most of us. However, I would like you to understand that we could just as easily go back now and substitute the word opportunity. So to avoid that redundancy, please understand that the points I'll be making about problems can be made by simply substituting the word opportunity as well. Problem identification is perhaps the most important part of the risk management process. Certainly it is early in the process and most organizations don't spend enough time working on this particular task. Problem identification, as defined here, has three steps to it. First, there's problem recognition. We have to be aware that a problem exists. So the problem must come to the risk manager's attention, and the risk manager has to recognize that this problem exists. There can be triggers out there that will trigger the existence of a problem. It could be a hurricane. It could be a, a burglary, a crime, a terrorist attack. There could be any number of events, people, or agents that could trigger a problem. There are also inputs. This would be information that is accumulating that's making us aware of the existence of a problem. The second part of the problem identification process is problem acceptance. This is when the risk manager recognizes that a problem exists and they decide intentionally to own this problem, to take it on and to address it. That means they will focus attention and resources on solving the problem. So in a broader sense, this is the prioritization task that many organizations face. What are we going to be working on and when? The third step in the problem identification process, now that you have recognized a problem and decided to focus some attention and resources on it, is the problem representation. This is when you articulate the problem for yourself and for your organization. Articulating the problem automatically links it or begins to link it to possible solutions. Once the problem is represented, a risk management activity can be initiated. Keep in mind we could substitute opportunity for problem here and talk about opportunity identification. In case it's not obvious, the reason you identify your problem is because, as John Dewey said, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. If somebody were to ask you, why are you doing a risk analysis? Why are you engaged in a risk management activity? If you can't finish the sentence, the problem is, in a clear and concise fashion, nothing that follows is likely to be very clear either. Getting the problem right is essential to good risk management. So a written problems and opportunity statement is the desired output for this problem identification activity. 
This written statement is your rationale. It's the reason for your risk management activity. Jonathan Swift from Ireland, quite some time ago, wrote a modest proposal. It was a tongue-in-cheek piece of literature where he was addressing the problems of his age, which were overpopulation and hunger. In his modest proposal, he has a solution to eat children. This would solve both problems. The point I'd like to draw from Swift's modest proposal is clearly solutions can't ignore values. And since problem formulations, problem identification begins to link us to solutions, problem formulation can't ignore values either. Problems are scientific, technical, but they also have a social context and we cannot afford to ignore that context. Let's bring opportunities back into the conversation. We're talking about issues. Organizations, individuals must address issues. So in a broadest, simplest sense, an issue is a condition found in the world. And we're going to divide those issues into two broad piles. There are problems. These are negative issues where a loss is possible. So from my food safety background, I would offer adverse health effects from foods would be a problem. Opportunities are quite different. These are positive conditions in the world, opportunities for gain. So again, reverting to, to the food community, we could say we have opportunities to improve nutrition or an opportunity to, to improve the general health of individuals. Make sure that when you are dealing with issues that you look for both problems and opportunities. So to illustrate this idea, again in the food safety world, we could say uh, don't eat fish because there's methylmercury in some fish and that's a problem. Or we could look at a different issue when we talk about eating fish because there is an opportunity through omega-3 fatty acids to improve your health. Issues come in both forms, problems and opportunities. As I mentioned before, the output of the problem identification step is a problems and opportunities statement. That is literally a piece of paper on which you have written down the problems and opportunities that you seek to address through your risk management activity. This is your reason for doing risk analysis. The process of developing a problem and opportunity statement is iterative. It's something that ideally you would do on the first day that you initiate a risk management activity. And obviously you're not going to understand the problems or the opportunities as well on the first day as you do later, especially once you've actually begun to assess the risks associated with these problems and opportunities. So here I offer an example of an iterative development of a problem and opportunity statement in this slide and the next one. Let's suppose that we become aware of increasing antimicrobial resistance to antibiotic drugs. This basically means that the bacteria that cause harm to humans develop resistance to the drugs that can be used to control them. But let's think a little further about this. Suppose we investigate and we refine this statement a little bit and say, okay, well the problem is really increasing antimicrobial resistance due to the use of antibiotic drugs in food producing animals. And then we say, aha, that's quite a different problem. And as we begin to understand the problem even more, we might say it is increasing antimicrobial resistance due to subtherapeutic use of antibiotic drugs in food producing animals. And so you can see our understanding of the problem is evolving. Well, let's build on the last slide and just fast forward a little bit and take a look at this problems and opportunities statement. This would be a, a representation of what a problems and opportunities statement might look like when we initiate our risk management activity. The real problem is increasing resistance of Campylobacter in chicken to fluoroquinolones. Notice how the problem has evolved. 
we've become very specific about the bacteria, very specific about the food in which the bacteria is found, and very specific about which drugs the bacteria have developed a resistance to. So that's one problem. And problems and opportunity statements rarely have just one problem. Most problems are multifaceted. So a second problem that we identify here is declining efficacy in the use of fluoroquinolones for the treatment of campylobacteriosis in humans. And what we're saying here is that because we have that increasing resistance, these drugs are no longer as useful for humans in the treatment of disease. And then finally, we note an opportunity. Perhaps we could reduce the incidence of campylobacteriosis in humans due to the consumption of chicken. Notice that this particular statement makes no mention of fluoroquinolones or antimicrobial resistance. But if we're going to tackle those first two problems, maybe we have an opportunity here not only to reduce incidence of fluoroquinolone resistant campylobacteriosis, but perhaps the garden variety of campylobacteriosis that humans are subjected to as well. So if you find this example somewhat confusing, my apologies because uh, my examples are not always going to be the examples that would be most useful to you. But what I would like you to see is this. A problems and opportunity statement can be quite succinct. It does not have to go on for pages or paragraphs even, as long as the people who are charged with solving these problems understand the problems as articulated. In this class, you're being asked to develop a problems and opportunity statement. And it's going to be a set of problems and opportunities that you'll work with throughout the course. So here's an example from a a class that I had working on food safety problems and they identified the problem that you see on the left. H7N9 is an avian flu. So they identified a number of problems. The transmission of H7N9 from poultry to humans due to eating improperly cooked or raw poultry meat from infected poultry was identified as one problem. There was public fear of this avian flu due to eating poultry as a second separate problem. Poultry sales were declining due to this fear, a third related problem. And then they add human to human transmission of the flu could lead to a serious epidemic. So they were the problems that they defined for their particular issue. They also identified some opportunities. There was the opportunity to educate, educate people on the nutritional value of eating poultry an opportunity to introduce good hygiene practice or good agricultural practice throughout the affected region. There was an opportunity to minimize public contact with live poultry and an opportunity to raise public awareness of public health safety controls, for example, wearing a mask or disinfection and the like. So I offer you a very simple takeaway. It's extremely important as an organization or an individual, if the responsibility is yours alone, to take time to carefully define the problems and the opportunities that you are going to be addressing. So in a team, I'm going to ask you to prepare a problems and opportunities statement, much like the one on the last slide. If you have any questions or concerns about how to do that, make sure that you communicate within the class.